Welcome to The Author Show, where we feature new authors and books from fiction to self-help and everything in between. You'll find it all at theauthorshow.com. That's theauthorshow.com. And now let the show begin. Hello and welcome back to the show. This is your host, Don McCauley. Today we're welcoming your program author, Rana Batar, and she is the author of The Long Tale of Tears and Smiles. Rana, how are you? I'm doing well, Don. How are you? Good. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself, please. Yeah, I'm a physician. I specialize in hematology and oncology. I grew up in Damascus, Syria, and I immigrated to the U.S. in 1990 to finish my medical training. I treat cancer patients and patients with hematological disorders. I've been in practice for 22 years, and I live in upstate New York with my husband and my two children. So tell us about your book. The Long Tale of Tears and Smiles explores my journey as an oncologist from growing up in Syria to going to medical school to immigrating to the U.S. and starting my medical training to becoming an oncologist. The narrative interweaves my life story with the stories of the patients I care for. It reflects on how bearing witness to their survival or their death had inspired my life and changed it, and how the lessons I learned from my patients enriched my life and influenced the way I raised my children. Now, who did you write your book for specifically? Who's your target audience? I wrote the book for cancer patients to celebrate their difficult journeys and to provide them with the refuge from the feeling of isolation and confusion that comes at a time of crisis. I wrote it for caregivers and healthcare providers to help shed some light on both the physical and emotional process of cancer diagnosis and treatment. I also wrote it for foreign graduate students so they could relate to the complexities, the obstacles, the setbacks, and also to encourage them to never give up. I wrote it for women who at some point might stop and question if they should pursue their professional aspiration. And I want to say that it can be done. You can balance your life and as a professional and your life and your family life. I also wrote it for truth seekers, people who want to learn about what is it like to be well acquainted with death and what is it like to understand it and to be so close to it. Could you say there's any type of central message or perhaps underlying theme that you would say runs throughout your book? Well, the book was inspired by my patients, their strengths and their perseverance. The stories show how their courage changed my life. And as such, the book mainly highlights the premise that with empathy and with tolerance, we can promote togetherness and we can defy finality and defeat loneliness. So if you had to choose, what would you say is the single most important idea you're sharing in your book that's really going to add value to the reader's life? Well, in immersing in the stories of cancer patients, their struggles, their triumphs, the reader will gain a new insight into the relative gravity of their personal challenges, and they will acquire a fresh perspective on their health and their lives. Now, if you could compare your book with any book out there we might already be familiar with, which book would it be and why? My book is similar to a book written by a surgeon. Her name is Dr. Pauline Chen. The book is Final Exam. In her book, she recounts her experiences of witnessing end of life And she also reflects on how to best process these experiences personally uh, and on behalf of the patients and their families. I think the long tail, however, is more concerned with the totality of human existence and the full spectrum of emotional experiences, high or low, especially during transformative encounters. So how in the world do you find the time to write and practice medicine full-time? Well, I think the three pillars of making it happen, Don, are number one, prioritizing my tasks, number two, organizing my time, and number three, focusing, and that is focusing without deviation. I concentrate 100% on my task as a doctor, 
and I do the same when I write. So I think with focus, organization, and prioritizing, one can make each minute count to the fullest. And with that, one could accomplish a lot. So how do you reconcile being a scientist and being a writer? You know, being a scientist and being a writer may seem contradictory. But for me, these two occupations complement each other. Actually, writing is my respite from the intensity of my profession. And at the same time, being a doctor is an inspiration for my writing. So one feeds on the other for me and one complements the other. My brain is usually very highly charged when I'm practicing medicine. And I think that that high energy nurtures my creativity. So what other books have you published and what are you working on now? In 2019, I published a book of poetry titled A Loaf of Bread. It's about the war in Syria. I have another book of poetry coming up next year titled Hold Your Breath. It's about my experience as a doctor during the pandemic. I just finished translating a poetry book written by a famous Syrian poet. His name is Nizar Kabbani, and I had sent it for publications. And I'm working on a novella titled God Only Forgives the Mighty. I'm also working on a poetry collection titled Seven Years of Rain and Seven Years of Drought. So how does being an immigrant inform the way you practice medicine? I look at it this way. As an immigrant, I was foreign to the new language, to the new land, to the new culture. And to navigate that newness, I needed and I appreciated the tolerance and open-mindedness of the people around me. Similarly, diseases and illnesses are foreign to patients' experiences. So I find that I approach my patients' weariness of what they don't know with more tolerance, more patience, and empathy, because I know what's needed to navigate any new encounter, any new challenge, whether be it an illness or a new language or a new treatment or a new home. So did the war in your homeland change who you are as a doctor? The war in Syria shocked my senses. Shocked it with the ease by which death came to people, came unexpectedly and timely and necessarily. I couldn't do anything for these people from a distance. But as a doctor here, I found myself more sensitive to my patient's complaint. As if the devastation I have seen on TV expanded my capacity to embrace and work harder to alleviate my patient's pain. It's like I was making up for my inability to help the people in Syria with insisting on doing everything possible to help my patients here. What are the challenges you face in writing in what for you is a second language? Writing in a second language was more difficult for me in the beginning, and that is because articulating literary expressions needed a wealth of vocabularies that I did not possess at that time. Writing became so easier after I finished my master's in English. And the fact is, not until one starts thinking in English, dreaming in English, that one starts writing flawlessly and eloquently. I still stumble on some grammar rules, but I think I'm getting better every day. I can relate to that. So, what's been your most rewarding experience since publishing this book? The most rewarding experience is hearing my patients' feedback after they read my book. Initially, I was actually concerned that the book might be sad and depressing, but to my surprise, my patients and their family find my book uplifting. They tell me that reading the tale gives them hope and courage to face the difficult time in their lives, and that's very rewarding to me. So as a young person, did your environment or upbringing play any major role in your writing? My upbringing played a major role in nurturing my passion for reading and writing. Uh, my grandfather father used to orate poems to us as kids. He would just make a priming poem on a spot for us. 
Uh, also, my father encouraged reading. He read to us since childhood, filled our house with books and classics. And actually, my parents encouraged my love for words. Uh, they would uh, wake me up sometimes when I was nine years old to recite poems I wrote to some visitors who came to our house. So definitely, my upbringing influenced my writing. Well, how would you describe your writing style? I would say that my writing is poetic, prosaic. Also, my writing is simple. It's very easy to understand, but also it has a kind of philosophical message in it. Now, most authors have a very specific reason for writing a particular book. What was your reason for writing this book? I wrote The Long Tale mainly and specifically to defy finality. It's as if I put these stories on paper, these memories on paper, I keep them alive and defeat all endings. So what part of this book would you say you personally like best? I like the last part of my book, where I tell the story of how the idea of writing the stories of my patients came to me, and that was during one of the family's Christmas dinners. That chapter is called, It Ends Where It Started. So other than selling your book, of course, is there anything else you hope to accomplish with it? Well, in telling the stories of life and death, I hope that healthy readers will get to appreciate their peaceful journey in life and that the sick readers will know that their silent voices are heard and that their suffering is not in vain because at the end, it does alter and it does better the lives of the people around them and it does that sometimes permanently. So in your opinion, who should buy your book? My book should be bought and read by cancer patients, patients with serious illnesses, their families, their caregivers, healthcare professionals, career women, medical students, and immigrants. And whoever is ever curious about how is it like to face cancer and how is it like to care for terminally ill patient? How does doctor relationships affect both sides? See, most people think that doctors go home. When they go home, they take their briefcases with them. But actually, doctors take home with them the lives they encounter during the day. And that's what makes all the difference. Do you have a website? I do have a website. It's www.renabitar.com. And could you spell your name for us, please? It's R-A-N-A. Last name is B-I-T-A-R. This has been just great. Our guest today has been Rana Batar, and she is the author of The Long Tale of Tears and Smiles. Rana, thanks very much for being with us today. Thank you for having me on the show, Don. This is Don McCauley wrapping up another edition of The Author's Show. Go out there, buy the book today, and please share this interview with your friends so that they, too, have the opportunity to discover our guests and their work. The Author Show can be accessed at any time at theauthorshow.com. Selected interviews can also be found on major platforms like Amazon Fire TV, the Roku Channel, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Amazon Music, and many more. And whether you're an author who would like to be featured or a reader in search of new books to read, The Author Show is a great place to start. Check us daily as we continue to introduce wonderful authors of very interesting books on The Author Show. Thanks for listening to The Author Show. Find out more about authors and their work at theauthorsshow.com. Theauthorsshow.com. Tune in next time to another great author on The Author Show.